In previous videos, we've talked about moving across the stage from left to right. We've talked about moving from right to left. We've talked about moving up and down. We've talked about moving forwards and backwards. So we've looked at a number of ways to sort of move across the stage with this illusion of walking. In this video, what I want to talk with you about is how to actually have the cat move across the stage, but instead of walking, to have him somersault or roll across the stage. And this is going to look very, very very different. I'm actually not going to do this by playing with multiple costumes. I'm in fact going to simply leave him in costume number uh, one with all of this. He's simply going to be in this format, but the idea is that I want him to come over here and roll across the stage as he goes. And so, you know, you might as you think about this, think about how we would change this loop. What would be different, right? I want him to move 25 steps in weight. But the idea is that as he moves, I don't want him to constantly point to the right. I want him to, you know, sometimes be pointing down a little bit, sometimes be pointing up a little bit, but but still moving left to right. And so we know, first of all, that for a rotation style, that probably means we want to go all around because we, this, in this case, we do want the cat to appear upside down and on his head and all of those kinds of things. And so then you say, well, I mean, one idea would be that every time he moves 25 steps, have him also rotate some number of degrees. Maybe, uh, I don't know, let's try 45 degrees and just see what that looks like. And so when we run this, he rolls 40. Oh, wait, that doesn't work, does it? Right? Because the problem is that he is turning 45 degrees, but remember that when he moves 25 steps, he's always moving 25 steps in the direction that he's, that he's move, pointing. So let me, I'm going to change temporarily the weight from weight a quarter of a second to two seconds. Right? He actually is, he points this direction. We say, move that direction move that direction. And so he's actually moving down and forward and to the right and up. And so he ends up walking in a circle at this point, which is not at all what we want. We want him to actually be moving still in that straight line from right to left. So how do we go about doing that? Well, it turns out we have to do that by replacing the move 25 steps. The move block always moves relation in relation to, relative to, if we're going to talk about relative motion and absolute motion, relative to the direction that the sprite is pointing. And we don't want him to move relative to the point he's motion, pointing. We want him to move in an absolute direction. We want him to move from left to right. And so in order to do this, we have to use something other than the move block. And as you look at what our options are, it's not the rotation, because that's what we're using. Um, it's sort of the idea of a go-to, because we want him to go to the next position to the right. But the problem is, if we do that, we can't really do it well, easily, with what we know now, in a loop. And so as you come down, it actually deals with this idea of working with the x and y values. And in our case, only the x value. But you notice there's some blocks here that say change x by some value and set x by some value. And we have the same two blocks for, for y as well. And, and really, these are the difference between relative motion, change x by 10 pixels, right? That's relative to where you are now. And absolute motion, set x to a very specific x value. No matter where I am, absolutely move to this. Well, for what we're doing, it turns out that the absolute motion isn't appropriate. We want the relative motion. It's sufficient to say, change my x by some number of positions. And if you remember, I just threw away a move 25 steps. Instead of moving 25 steps, which always moved in the direction that I was pointing, I'm going to change that block to change x by 25. And if you think about the xy coordinate system here, it says no matter what x value you're currently at, I want you to add 25 to that. So if I happen to be at 218, like it is now, sorry, negative 218, add 25 to it, that's going to go to negative 193, if I'm doing the math in my head correctly. Let's make this easier, right? Negative 200. 
right? You see that I'm always changing by 25 down here, negative 75, negative 50, negative 25, zero, and so we're going through, and even though the cat is rotating every time, rotating 45 degrees, he's continuing to move forward in that x direction, moving from negative 200 over here on the left edge to positive 200 on the right edge. And so if I speed it up a little bit now, you see him roll his way across the stage. And we might even decide that's still too slow, and we want 0 0.1. Right? Kind of fun and cool. And you can play with this. You could decide that instead of you know changing by 45 degrees, you want to change by a little bit less, maybe 25 degrees, maybe only change by, by 20 each time. If I do that, then this goes up to 20. I'm just changing my parameters, but 20 times 20 is still 400. He's still going to work across the stage, and now he rolls as he goes. Right? And turns out that you can change this down quite a bit, and in fact, once you start to do this, you can even get rid of the weight entirely and he'll just roll across the stage. Right? So you can play with the timing, you can play with all of this, and explore how you can make the cat roll at the speed that you want.